Uh, so I can almost hear a bunch of you asking the question, why would mean absolute deviation be very important at all? This big, huge calculation that seems to be very time-consuming, why would it be important? First of all, this calculation isn't very time-consuming if you know how to use Excel, and we'll be working with Excel a little bit more later. But um, the reason it's valuable um, is because it gives you an idea of how spread apart your data is. Let me give you an example. If I have a class of, say, seven kids, and I give them a test, <clears throat> and their scores are, let's say, let's see, out of 100, um, 65, 68, 78, 89, 92, um, uh, 95, and 100. Somebody got 100% on it, which is, which is great. What's the average there? Well, that's easy. We add them all together and then divide by... seven. So here we go. Uh, 65. Plus 68. Plus 78. Plus 89. Plus 92. Plus 95. Plus 100. Now, I'm going to make a point here with this calculator. You can see the numbers on here. A lot of you will be tempted to right now hit divided by 7. Well, what that will do, if I hit divide by 7, what that will do is divide 100 by 7 and then add it to all of those numbers. We don't want to do that. We want to do this, hit equals, and then take the answer, 587, and then divide by 7. It's order of operations, and your calculator will always obey those order of operations. So, we have our division problem here. If I hit equals, I get an average of 83.86 on the test. All right. Uh, 587 divided by 7 equals 83.86. Now, you'll notice on the paper... I actually wrote 587 divided by 7 is 83.86. What a lot of you are tempted to do is, you see this on the calculator, you have this data set written right here, and then all you do is you write 83.86. And if that's all you write, what have you lost? You've lost what the sum of these are. You've lost how you got there. You've lost a lot of information that the next person looking at this can't see. Whether it's your teacher or a co-worker or a, or a fellow student who says, hey, I don't know how to do this, how did you do it? If you have all of this written down, you can be much more effective in what you're doing. If all you do is write that down, you've lost a lot of information. So practice writing all of these things down that you've done. Cool? Good. Now I have an average of 83.86. The next question is, what is the absolute deviation, the mean absolute deviation. Do you remember how to do that? All right. We take this, each of these, 65, 68, 78, 89, 92, 95, and 100. The value in uh, having this recorded is you guys can fast forward if you know how to do it already. But we're going to minus 83.86 for each of them. All right, and what we get is negative twenty point eight six. Three less, negative 17.86, actually three more, negative 7.86, um, 
four five point one four eight point one four eleven point one four and sixteen point one four okay now I got those quickly not by calculating the difference every time but by knowing that sixty five is three less than sixty eight so all I did was add three here this is ten more so I added ten here okay then I figured this one out I know ninety two is three more than eighty nine so I added three here then I added three and then I added five. Okay, little things that you want to observe and patterns you want to see to be able to figure things out quickly. I'm not as smart as you think. Um, I just did it the easy way. Okay, so we have here all of our deviations, and I'm going to label this right here: deviations. Okay, when somebody calls you a deviant, that means you uh, you're different than the norm. All right, they say you deviate, you're deviating from the norm. Well, this is our norm, this is our average, and these are the deviations from the average, meaning how far away they are from the average. But what we want is the mean absolute deviation. We've got that so far, now we want the mean absolute deviation. Well, remember in the last video I said absolute means the positive value there, absolute is the distance from the center. Okay, so my absolute deviations are 20.86 instead of negative. So we just take those negatives and change them to positives. These are the absolute deviations. So remember uh, when you uh, learned absolute value, asking the question, why in the world would absolute value be uh, necessary? Well, whenever you want to find out how far something is away from something else, you use the absolute value, and this is one situation where absolute value is a, is a good thing to know. Uh, these are our absolute deviations, so we've got this part, deviations, and we've now got the absolute part taken care of. What about the mean part? Well, let's look at the mean. Once again, we take an average. So we're now we're taking an average of the deviations instead of an average of the data points. Let's take that average real quick. So I get 87.14 divided by 7 is 12.45. You notice I'm keeping everything to two decimal places. Okay? I just tend to generally do that. So I rounded this to two decimal places. So my mean absolute deviation for this data set is 12.45. So I have another data set here. Remember this mean absolute deviation is 12.45. If you look at this second data set I have here, you'll notice that the average of both data sets is 83.86. And so just looking at the average, somebody might say, oh, well, this class and this class both averaged 83.86. That's pretty good. However, if you look at the mean absolute deviation of both sets, the mean absolute deviation of this set right here is 25.92, and the mean absolute deviation of this set here, this, this first one, is 12.45. Well, if we compare 25.92, is that the same thing as 12.45? The answer is no, it's not. In fact, this is twice as big, more than twice as big as this one. Okay, so if I'm a statistician and somebody comes to me and says, let's see, you have an average score on your test scores for class 1 of 83.86, and you have an average score for class 2 of 83.86, or something similar to that, I'm going to say, oh, that's great, that's wonderful. However, let's look a little deeper at it. What's the mean absolute deviation? 
and she'll say, well, the mean absolute deviation is 12.45 for the first class. And the mean absolute deviation for the second class is 25.92. And I tell myself, wow, that's, that's, uh, that's a huge difference. I need to look very closely at this class and find out why they deviated so much more from the norm than this one. Okay? Now that might not seem extremely important, but it is because then I would go back and look at the scores and notice that there were two people that got very low scores. And I need to focus on those two people and see if I can get them some help. All right? Now in your packet there's another question that talks about this that's a much more valuable uh, question than even necessarily this one. And so we'll, uh, you'll see that as time goes by. But that's it for mean absolute deviation and why it might be, uh, might be important.